Elizabeth, thank Hi. you for joining me. <laughs> Can you tell me who are you? Where are you from and where are you based now? Uh, hi, Joe. So uh, my name is Elizabeth Taylor. Obviously not the famous one. I always get asked about that. Um, I am from the UK and I'm now based in Singapore. Very good. Tell mm. me, how come I have roped you into this trailing spouse podcast? Tell us your trailing spouse journey. Where have you started from and ended up and the bits and pieces in between? Absolutely. Um, okay, so 2018, we moved from the UK over to Singapore uh, for my husband's job. Um, at the time, I was working for a training company um, in the UK doing digital marketing training. Uh, I was loving it, <laughs> as is always the way when a big change comes up. Um, so it was a, a challenge in itself to leave that role. Um, and moved to a new country. So that was sort of summertime 2018. Um, and then it, really the first kind of couple of months of being in Singapore, finding somewhere to live, getting the kids sorted in school. Um, and then I started applying for jobs, which was possibly one of the most soul destroying activities I think I've ever done. Like I've been really lucky in the past. I've had some really amazing jobs. I worked at Warner Brothers and Universal Pictures and some great sort of higher education institutions in the UK. Kind of just thought, you know, I can use these skills and get a job. Um, so I think I topped out at 50 applications via LinkedIn and various other things. 90% didn't even get, you know, a confirmation that I'd applied. Um, nothing. So they, I just felt like I was speaking to just this void. <laughs> oh, goodness. My, yeah. I, with my other hat that I wear, which is running a remote work jobs board in Australia, um, that absolute ghosting of job seekers and candidate applications, like it just, it grinds my gears and upsets me in no yeah, describable way because of people just don't think people are like a hiring manager or someone in the the big machine, a cog that's posted a job out, sort of forgets that humans are applying for jobs. And mm -hmm. that is, I'm really, I'm actually really sorry to hear that because that's a really disappointing experience. But like 50, that's actually really impressive that you got that for. Yeah, I, just, I just kept on going. <laughs> I was like, surely I've got to get a job out of here somehow. So um, how how long, like a, over a period of time, would that have been the 50 job applications? So probably over like six to eight weeks. Like I really went for it because like kids were in school. I was used to working kind of full time. Like I used to about four days a week back in the UK and work around the kids finishing school when they were younger. Um Obviously, when we came here, they have longer school days with more activity. So I had more time. So it was a, actually quite a good opportunity to start doing more work. So, yes, yeah, so I really went for it for four to six weeks because I'm definitely someone who I need to work. I want to work. Um, I, I tried all the kind of coffee mornings and stuff and met some really interesting people. But I, I needed that extra layer. Um, like I, I definitely wasn't ready to just have coffee go for a walk and then that was that was kind of my day like I just wanted something I need something else um so yes I did it for about four to six weeks I, I remember my friend in the UK saying well you know this gig it's really for Steve your husband it's it's not for you I was like really so that's like that's it then like I'm just gonna sit here and twiddle my thumbs and wait for the children to get home from school um so it, it ended up kind of okay, like my, my first lesson that I learned. So I, I took a job in the end uh, with a company. It was part-time, three days a week, um, slightly more junior than I was hoping for. Lesson number one, don't do that again. <laughs> um, and I did that for three months. Really loved the team that I was working with, but it, I was like filling in Excel spreadsheets and sending emails for people and it just wasn't it wasn't enough it wasn't fulfilling what I wanted from my career um so I did the three months and then kind of politely stepped away from that one mm. yeah <laughs> yeah that's interesting so but that's interesting that you actually were what were we saying 2018 so the fact that you were able to get a, a job and yeah. that was through one of the the 50 job applications that it one was yes off. one one of them came off <laughs> um yeah through LinkedIn I got that I think so um and and it was you know it, again I, I learned a lot from it it's just 
um, on reflection, I think I probably jumped at that job because I was getting a little bit desperate because I wanted to work and, and no one else was responding. Um, so I, I took a position that maybe I wouldn't have normally considered, which if anyone that's listening to this, you know, don't do that. <laughs> I'd really recommend holding ho your horses and kind of sticking to your guns of what you want um, and, and waiting for that rather than kind of jumping in to something that's not quite right for you. Mm. Were you able to sort of um, at least, like, did that three months give you a bit of an opportunity to start building a bit of a professional network in Singapore? Like, did it actually open up some opportunities like that? Kind of. I mean, it was a, a financial services based company, so it wasn't something that I was necessarily going to pursue in terms of that sector. So I'm from, first of all, an entertainment industry background, and then I moved into more kind of marketing training. So it wasn't it, the, the two things didn't really connect. Um, but what it did do is it gave me an insight into working life in Singapore and you know how people conduct meetings and all the rest of it. So that that was really interesting. Um, and I met some some nice people, an Australian lady actually in that team who was really lovely and very supportive. And it was kind of nice just to talk to someone about like, how do you do this? Because and most of the people I was meeting at that time, having just arrived really in Singapore, weren't working and didn't have any aspirations to work. So it's trying to find that network of people who were going to help and advise me and get me into a role. Um, so, I, yeah, it did start a little bit on a small scale during those those three months that I worked for that company. Mm, yeah. That's interesting. So how then did you find that you started to collect more of these people as you've gone along of these um like have you joined professional networks or mm. um other sort of groups and things that have been able to give you access to people that were in a bit more of a similar mindset yeah that's a great question I mean I think for me it was really organic how that happened um having had that role and that sort of threw my confidence a bit I actually um enlisted a business coach um and worked with her for a few months and and she was saying you know you need to get out there and find this network of people just as you said you know professional people that are working you need to find your gang um and she said just start doing what you enjoy doing and you will naturally bump into those people um and I actually met the person that ended up being my business coach because I decided to start giving some free workshops on marketing uh, for a cafe chain here in Singapore just because I wanted to do something uh, they were running these kind of professional lunches for for women here who run their own business and that's really where it all started so you know I did that um, and met the lady who became my business coach then and people there were like is this so what's your business then is this what you do I was like well what <laughs> no and I hadn't at that point considered setting up my own gig or freelancing or contract working I've only ever worked kind of in big companies so I just it really opened my eyes to other opportunities to work isn't that so funny I sort of um I it's funny that's and it's silly that I would think like this but I often think that the default is that like people that have started businesses have come from families of business owners or have worked in other small businesses and and sort of seen like oh okay I could do this um but it's so funny that that wasn't even on your radar no, not at all I think really it was just my drive to to work and do something I enjoyed and and you know have something um valuable to do during the day I think that really kind of got me to where I ended up being um just from starting to do it for free meeting the right people and then it was, I think I had about 10 different people say, you know, you should do this as a, as a business. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, well, maybe I should, right? Like I've got enough people telling me now, they're like, oh, you should run workshops and do training. And, you know, there's lots of people here that would need that help. Um, and, and one of the things that I learned very quickly in Singapore is, is, is this really connected group of small business owners, which is amazing. I mean, I don't think, I, I'm not aware of that equivalent in London, right? Like it's just, everyone is very supportive they you know the word of mouth recommendations I didn't have to do a lot of marketing at the beginning it it was really good actually it was very happy to help so talk me through how did it go from like 10 people saying hey you should do this as a business idea to um like actually starting a business and tell me what does your what does this business actually do like what's your what's your elevator pitch after after doing <laughs> <friends>? <laughs> okay 
Uh, I'll go I'll go back a few steps first just to make sense of it. So I think so I went from working for this financial services company and then I got a bit of contract work with a, a really great training company uh, in Singapore, teaching some of their courses in the evening. So that's what got me thinking. Actually, I could stick with the thing that I love doing, which is marketing training. Um, and the limitations there were obviously if I was working for that one company, I couldn't work for anybody else. So I was getting asked to run these workshops, but it was kind of limited by that employment contract. So that's when I thought, actually, I can go out on my own here and still continue to work with this training company in Singapore, but I can also then help some of the SMEs as well. So that's when it all started. So that was probably, well, that was a whole year and a half after arriving in Singapore we've gone to now. So that was, uh, well, that was the end of 2019, which obviously coincided with another major event as well. Um, so I'd been teaching and training that whole time, um, but I actually set up my business in December 2019. Uh, at the time, I called it Digital Direction. Um, and I was then providing sort of training and consultancy for small businesses uh, in all aspects of marketing to help them grow their business. Um, I mean, there's so many like, amazing companies here and people are setting up websites and doing social media marketing and trying to do email that's not their core skill. Their core skill is making their products or selling their services. So I was trying to help them fill in the gaps, really, as to where they needed help. Um, and then COVID happened and everybody wanted to learn about marketing, right? Suddenly everyone's like, oh, God, I need a Facebook page. Or I need my website or how do I sell stuff on Instagram? Um, so for about a year, I was super busy, <laughs> which was which was good. Yeah, that's good. I like hearing those silver lining stories. <laughs> yeah, it was just, yeah, it went it went a bit crazy, which which is great. Um, and then sort of that meant that I got into some of these networks, kind of go back to one of your previous questions. So um, networks like, you know, Launchpad, uh, Primetime, all of these professional networks within Singapore have really helped because otherwise you're kind of just sat at home, right? Like with all these ideas spinning through your head, trying to figure out which one to do first um, and getting sort of guidance and also tips from some of the workshops that these networks run um, and meeting people, I think has been just an absolute godsend for me. So um, actually it coincides today, I launched my new website today <laughs> and that was in collaboration with five or six people that I've met through these networks. We've become good friends. We collaborate on different projects all the time. And somebody helped me with my branding. Someone helped me with my content. Someone helped me with the design. Someone helped me with my email setup. And that is all through this kind of group of people that I've met um, through the professional networks in Singapore. So it's been amazing. Hmm. So tell me, how are you finding them to start with? Because I think that this is a, a real challenge for people um, moving anywhere, whether it's moving from hmm. like the city to a country area or if it's moving from like interstate within your own country or if you're moving like abroad and ending up in a, in a completely different country. How, how were you finding them? Like, obviously we, you found your business coach through the, through the, your volunteering, I guess, but how did you yeah. start finding these networks? And um, I guess, and then second question, did you, um, did you find that you had to sort of uh, like amp yourself up to get into them <laughs> or like give yourself like a, a kick up the butt to go and, and join um, organizations like this or groups like this to actually put yourself out there? Yeah, yes and yes. Um, so how, first of all, how did I find them? So um, I, th I started off doing just like a Google search, right, and trying to find professional networks. Um, at the time when I started doing that, so 2018, 2019, it was quite hard because um, not a lot of websites are really well optimized for SEO. Great for me, what I do, but um, <laughs> lots of opportunity to help. But yeah, it wasn't, wasn't really giving me any context as to whether any of those are any good. So I started doing search, I then went on to social, so joined some Facebook groups, uh, some expat Facebook groups, and they've been incredibly valuable in terms of, you know, people discussing where they're finding resources, how they're getting on with work. So I'm a member of several of those, um, some based in Singapore, some based in Australia, actually, and, uh, and in the UK, just to kind of get some advice as to where to go and who to speak to. So that's how I discovered most of the networks that I ended up joining. 
Um, I think I did what a lot of newbie expats do, and I just joined everything. <laughs> I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing. I think I'm a I'm a jump in with both feet kind of a girl, right? So <laughs> um, that was you're speaking. You're, you're speaking to a very similar one. As well. <laughs> My husband, crazy. He's like, hang on, what's on tonight, and which group is oh, this? No. I know. <laughs> the thing is, when you don't know anything to differentiate these groups, you don't know which one's going to be right for you, do you? So. So yeah, so I've done a lot of like soul searching and confidence building because like you, you know, you go to these things, you don't know anybody at all. Um, you know, I'm quite confident, it's weird. I'm quite confident doing my training and speaking in front of groups, but the small talk, chitter chatter, not not so comfortable with that. Um, so yeah, I had to give myself a big like, you know, talking to before any of these sessions, like, come on, this, you can do this. You're just going to go and find one nice person and it's all going to go from there, which is what happens, right? So you go in and you chat to a couple of people, then you find someone that you connect with, um, like when we chatted. <laughs> and that's great. And then I think from there, for me, it, it took quite a long time, but it kind of snowballed from there. So you meet one person that you really connect with. Um, so I met one of the the first people I met is still a really good friend of mine that I work with, Anna, who does the, has a branding agency here. And and then through her, I've then met other people and they're similar, right? They've got similar kind of values. They want to get the same thing out of work. So we sort of grown this network of people um, who get on well, all kind of similar people. So and, and they're from different networks, I guess, overall. But it's kind of that expansion of that small, comfortable group that you start off with. Uh, that just gets bigger and bigger but you know I've definitely been to those events and at one point I think everyone was chatting I was just sitting there with my glass of wine like hey <laughs> this is fine we can do this it's okay come on just come and talk to me please yeah yeah and it's it's hard because I think when you're so you're new to a country uh so you're new to all the cultures and norms and how everybody socializes I was new to being an expat so I was I came from a kind of small town just outside of London tiny everybody knew everybody so you know, there's no worry in the morning on the walk to school you just knew who everybody was it was very comfortable um so in a completely different environment a city didn't know anybody never been an expat before and really I didn't know exactly what I was doing with my business at that point so it's not even like I could go in right with an elevator pitch and say hey this is me this is what I'm all about I was still really developing my business idea and, it, and I mean, it's still evolving sort of you know a couple of years down the line um so it was difficult to be clear with people what I was after or what I was looking for because I didn't really know myself um and I don't like I'm just the sort of person I am I don't like that I like things to be clear you know set out I like to have a nice defined path of what's happening so all this uncertainty was really unsettling um and I think you know, it's a real test for a lot of training spouses, right? So you you kind of go through this, right, who, who am I? What am I about? What am I doing here? And I've never had to question that before, really. Um, and that's, that's it's, it's hard. It's really hard to go through that. You're speaking my language. I, <laughs> I have, I traumatize people when I tell them that I have a 70 year plan. They're like, what? <laughs> Wow. And so us physically relocating to another country wasn't actually on the 70 year plan. So I can sympathize with that um, sort of flailing around and like, what am I doing? And who am I? And where am I? Because this is not what I had planned. Yeah. <laughs> so I think that that's a really, um, like a really common feeling that people mm. feel when you physically pick up and you move somewhere else. It's really quite disorientating. It is. It really is. Yeah. Yeah, and you can't just do what you did before. You know, this nice, neat career path that you had set in front of you and your network of people that without even realising you've built up along the way, like that's that's all out the window. So you, you're back to square one. And I think, um, I remember my husband saying to me, this is a great opportunity. Yeah, you can do what you want. I'm like, hmm, that would be a great opportunity if I liked having things open and unanswered and not clear. Um, but it was almost too overwhelming that, sure I could do whatever I wanted um what was that you know it's trying to try to nail down exactly what you were going to do and um, that was quite a difficult process to go through because you you do question you know I was like well I don't want to carry on doing marketing or should I you know I went through a whole stage of thinking I wanted to be a teacher which you know thankfully I didn't do but <laughs> uh, my friend taught me out of that I was like you know but I love you know training people she's like kids it would be kids right not adults 
Um, but I went through that whole process of maybe I should consider that instead of doing my marketing training and coaching. And yeah, so it's, you know, I think it makes you more robust in the long term, but it's it's almost like somebody's putting you through this like prolonged boot camp. <laughs> like, you know, throwing questions at you every five seconds, like answer this. <laughs> Who are you? What are you trying to do? That's actually a really good um, analogy. I like that, the perpetual boot camp. Yeah. <laughs> But I agree with you sometimes that it, that too much choice is really overwhelming. Mm. Then you've got this added sort of almost discomfort with the people who are where you've left behind. Again, whether you've relocated towns or countries mm. is that they had sort of this, this stigma that goes with oh, how amazing you've got all this opportunity and you can reinvent mm. yourself and you can go down a completely new path but sometimes when the options are endless that's really overwhelming mm, absolutely absolutely and it's you've got to have a really strong character I think to first of all answer that question when somebody says it to you but also then have that sort of sense of purpose and self that you can figure it out yourself or, or with other people what it is that you you do want to do and how you can use your experience and skills that you've gained today in order to do something worthwhile because you know, I think with this whole training spouse journey, who knows when the next change is coming. So you can do what you want, but also it's got to work around possibly moving countries again or, <laughs> you know, having prolonged holidays, like, you know, going traveling much more than we did before. So it's got to be able to be flexible and adaptable to your your different lifestyle. So it's it's hard to find what that thing is. Mm. Did you find that that initial coaching was really helpful then as far as almost trying to not so much send you down a particular path, but to close off other paths and say, look, I'm not interested in that one and I'm not yeah. interested in this. Yeah, it was good. And it was uh, with a lady who was an expat and had been here for 10 years. So it was just good to get her context and experience as well. So she sort of taught me through her journey and what happened with her and how she decided what she was doing. Um, and it, it helped me, yeah, to really kind of funnel down into, I don't want to do that, and, and I do want to do this, and and these are the things that are important to me, because I think, again, when you're in your nice, comfy environment, in your hometown, you, you kind of end up in stuff, you, know, you end up in projects and work, and you don't really think, oh, I like this because, but actually, I don't like this aspect of it, so she really made me get clarity on what it was that I wanted, um, and also followed up to make sure I actually did something about it, because you know, there's so many excuses, aren't there? Like, oh, the in-laws are coming to visit next week, so I'll just plan that. Or, oh, I'm planning my holiday for Christmas, so I'll just park doing anything about this really uncomfortable position I'm in until then. So, yeah, I'm great at procrastinating. <laughs> so accountability as well. Yeah, yeah, good for accountability, yeah. Yeah. Have you got any advice on something or things that you wish you'd known before you'd got started? Yeah, well, I think the biggest thing for me is, I think it all comes from from you, from what you want. And don't sort of listen to too many people that, oh, you should do this and you shouldn't do that. And I think you've got to really think about what you want out of the situation for it to work. So um, as I shared earlier, I think don't jump into things because you feel like that's the right thing to do or that's what's expected of you because I think you'll likely end up in the wrong place if you do that. Um, so that'd be one bit of advice and the other would be definitely to find your tribe I'm sure lots of other people have said that as well but you know it makes such a difference having people around you that you can talk to who are in the same position who can help connect you with the right people who can kind of help guide you through what job or project or you know career that you, you want to do while you're in that particular place oh, I feel like you've just done like a major plug trailing spouse co look at this <laughs> You've just segued straight into it. Beautiful. You found your tribe here. Nice work. Yeah, well, exactly. It's yeah, super important. Uh, look, Liz, I really appreciate your time. It's been really interesting to hear hear your story. And I'm really, some really interesting like takeaways there. So thank you so much for joining me. Oh, you're very welcome. Nice to talk to you.